On my last crystal hunt that I went on, showed on my last video, I came across this clearing and I found some nice crystals here. But as well as that, I found some rocks with some fossils and a Stone Age hammerstone. So I did some research on where these rocks came from and what I had. Southeast England is all sedimentary rocks, but that doesn't mean it's flat. There's actually three r ridges of high hills across the area. North of London there are the Chiltern Hills, and then south of London the North Downs, and further south the South Downs. These are all made of chalk, which was laid down when the area was under water under the sea in the Cretaceous period, between 97 and 65 million years ago. Soon after this, movements of the Earth's crust caused the chalk to bend, the same ones that created the Alps across Europe. In geological terms, the dip is called a syncline and the hump is called an anticline. Then in the next 50 million years, the remains of the chalk hump and what's under it were eroded away and the dip filled with London clay and sand, which is where I am now. The sand was laid down 45 million years ago, followed by another earth movement which added to the dip. And I could observe this when I took my spirit level out to measure this locally. On a previous video somebody commented that the rocks I was looking at were chert and not flint, and I admit I was wrong, that's correct. Although it is confusing when you look at the differences there are several explanations, and chert and flint are both micro crystalline silica rocks. The definition that I'll stick to is that flint is a type of chert and is formed in the chalk layer. So my flints were formed in the chalk layer of the North Downs and as that's been eroded they've fallen through onto the sand, right? Well no, I was wrong on two counts here. First of all, the chalk is below the level of the ground, so how could the flints erode out and end up on the top of the surface up here? What's actually happened is that the erosion of this hump area, which stretches across from Surrey to Sussex to the uh, south coast of England, by the action of waves and the sea, has brought material um, northwards, and that's called drift. So the, the material has drifted up from Sussex through to Surrey and has ended up here like sometimes 20 miles further north. So here's the North Downs, but we need to get closer than that. And without doing rock climbing or abseiling, there is one other way to get closer. And that took me to the Farnham Road car park in Guildford Town Centre. In October 1849, the London and South Western Railway opened a stage of their main line between London and Portsmouth. To do this, they had to tunnel under the North Downs, just south of Guildford Station, and at the same time, they cut into the cliff face to make a steam shed for their engines. This lasted until 1967, and the, the site was cleared, and then subsequently a multi-storey car park was placed there. So in theory, if I go to the multi-storey car park, I should get a close-up view of the cliff face. So this is the chalk cliff face and you can see some broken flint nodules and as the textbook suggested they're all coloured black. But my rocks are a mixture of colours as well as black there are brown and red and white rocks. So I am wrong on a second count, I think it is true the rocks I have are mainly chert with a mixture of some flint. So where did the chert come from? So the area between the North and South Downs is called the Weald. And below the chalk layer, there's a, another sand layer called the green sand, which is actually older and contains some chert rock. And this is, I believe, where my chert originated from, which means my rocks are actually older than I thought.
The Church and Flint Rocks I have are ancient and date back to the time of the dinosaurs, but the crystals are much younger. Some estimates are between a million years and a thousand years old, but possibly even younger than that. Why do some places that I look have no crystals and others have a lot? Do you remember one thing I said on my last crystal hunt? So I think this must have been some kind of peat bog at some time because there's a lot of like organic material peat around here. Or maybe the acid in the bog has helped cause the crystals form. So to try out my theory, I got this testing kit from the local garden centre. Let's take a sample here. And let's take a second sample here in the forest. This represents pretty average conditions around this whole area. So the second sample from the forest has come out as pH 5, which is very acid. Looking at it now, I think the first sample from the peat bog has actually gone even more acid, has gone off the scale. So to try out my theory, I came to another place I know that's pretty peaty. It's got a lot of peat around it. See if I could find any crystals. Now I never found anything at all here before. Uh, so I had another look and uh, the reason there's so much peat is that this there's a lot of this moss here and um, When that dies It creates the peat and decays it creates the peat underneath But this time I looked um, and to work out where the water would stand so rather than go to the highest point I went down to wherever the, there was any dips or valley like a valley you, you can see here in the, in the land and this time I found quite a few crystals I hit on another good spot including this really stunning one that I found just down here although I haven't proved the theory it is possible so why does it even matter if the peat theory is correct I'm very lucky to live in an area where all the perfect conditions have come together to create crystals. But if not, it does mean that it may be possible to find crystals in other areas such as London. Now that would be a challenge for a future video. On my walks I look for crystals in the rocks and sometimes I find Stone Age rocks as well. And usually I think these are separate things but maybe these two worlds have come together. Maybe the crystals have been concentrated in areas by human interaction. I sometimes wonder what Stone Age people thought about the crystals that they found on the rocks. Did they treat them like early jewellery, which was starting about this time, or give them some kind of spiritual meaning? A couple of the Stone Age tools I found have crystals as well. Is this just coincidence? Or did they treat it as decoration, much like an emerald dagger or a golden gun? Maybe their tools were buried when they died. Which means that the remains of my ancestors could be right beneath my feet.